Okay, we are off the rails as usual. I feel like I'm always off the rails, but today especially, I did that thing where you pull the hair tie out of the ponytail and my hair just stayed in a ponytail. <laughs> Never mind that the dog just puked just off camera, so I have that little treat waiting for me uh, when I finish recording, but we've got a great conversation for you today. Raise your hand if you have ever had body issues. Okay. Raise your hand if your child has had body issues or you are worried that your child will have body issues. Um, okay. So we probably all have two hands raised, right? We run around in a culture that's rampant with image and what our bodies look like, not just in cheer, but everywhere, right? So today, Jennifer Wagner and I sit down and, and talk about building confidence in our bodies and encouraging our kids and our athletes to do the same. Jennifer is a podcaster. She is an author. She wrote an amazing book called Your Good Body that we talk about. Jennifer has an amazing health journey. She lost over 150 pounds which is incredible. I will try to post the before and after pictures in um, in the blog post, so look for that in the show notes. But even after losing 150 pounds, she still had body insecurities and still was not happy with her body. So she dug a little bit deeper into that. And I think that in in this world, in this world of cheer especially, it's easy to sort of look to the left and look to the right and wish that you looked like someone else or wish that you didn't have some of the features that you have. And I feel like we have all dealt with that at some point in our lives. And so Jennifer is here to give us some encouragement and some practical tips on how we can focus less on our bodies and more on us as the person and create a space for our kids to do the same. I want to shout out to you all. Thank you so much for the reviews. Thank you for visiting the blog and listening to the podcast week after week. Those reviews mean so, so much to me. And thank you for sending in your questions in Instagram and in my email inbox. You can email me, hi at the cheermomblog.com. You can also leave me a voicemail. So go to cheermompodcast.com and you can actually record a voicemail right there in the website and it'll come straight to me and I might play it on the show. So I'm getting a Q&A episode together. You've sent in lots of great questions. So I'm getting that together. And if you want your question to be heard or to hear the answer to your question on the show, send it in to me any which way you feel comfortable. All right, we're going to get to today's episode Encouraging Body Confidence with Jennifer Wagner. All the moms in the world, let's chat it up. We're talking competitions, uniforms, and all of the above. It's the Cheer Mom, yes, the Cheer Mom Podcast. Cheer Mom, yes, the Cheer Mom Podcast. Cheer Moms, your podcast is on. Jennifer, my friend, this is so exciting because... We've been friends for a long time. I've been following your journey. Uh, you have such an impressive story to tell. Start by introducing yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about where you've been and how you got to author and successful blogger and health coach and beautiful soul that you are. Oh, thank you so much. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. So I am a mom of two. I have mine are still pretty little. My youngest one is six. My oldest one is nine, a boy and a girl. And we live in Virginia. I'm married to my absolute best friend. So I have to give you the backstory about where I got. I have a massive backstory of body stuff. Like I can remember all the way back in kindergarten when I was a little boy said that my cheeks looked like chipmunk cheeks. I thought he was calling me chubby. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is not okay. And I had all these these messages wrapped up in all of that. I grew up in the in the era of lots of dieting and 
all of these things to make me feel, to make me get the message that my body was just too large, that I needed to make myself smaller. So I went through all my formative years, my elementary, middle, high school, just feeling like my body was just too big. I needed to lose weight. And then I did that thing that so many of us want to do. I lost all that, a bunch of weight, dropped 150 pounds, but found that even half my size, I still was very, very critical of my body. So I tell you all that to tell you that my big, big focus is not actually how can we make ourselves smaller? Because I've learned firsthand that that doesn't fix body image issues. My big focus is helping us to see our bodies that we live in right now today as good and to have a better relationship with food and movement, but even more importantly, to have to be at peace with these bodies that we are going to live in for the rest of our days on earth. So that's sort of my backstory. And now today, yes, I've I've got a book out there. I do some podcasting and just kind of show up trying to empower people to see their bodies as good. And I think that we can all relate to that somehow, right? Where we've all probably had comments made to us that that maybe we internalize or misinterpret or maybe people are just actually that mean and like yeah. the boy who told you you had chipmunk cheeks like he probably he probably didn't think anything of it but right. but you internalize that comment and and now you're as an adult that you you remember that i remember i remember there was a boy at school who liked me but his bro- his older brother actually told him not to ask me to be his girlfriend you know in the 5th grade or 4th mm-hmm. grade or whatever um because i had john elway lips oh. um I had John Elway lips and <laughs> like, where does that stuff come from? Like, how do people think of this kind of thing? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So we, we all kind of have those, those stories, right? Where we feel insecure about our body and it's usually during a formative time in our lives, like puberty or, uh, or something. And, and then it, don't even get me started. I could talk all day about how society tells us we should be looking and feeling about our bodies and the way that we eat and and things like that. And uh, so, how did you? How were you able to overcome that? Because you have an extraordinary weight loss story, and people go, "Oh my gosh, how did you do it? And how did you overcome?" And tell me a little bit about that. Well, the focus has always been my body. If you think about it, I got bullied really badly all through school because of my weight. So I had people telling me about my body. And then when I lost the weight, it was still all about my body. It was the other spectrum. People were saying, oh, you look so good. You must feel so great. So I'm getting all of these accolades and this positive feedback but it's still about my body. Meanwhile, I'm getting a little bit older. I'm, you know, making my way through adulthood. I'm a few years out of high school and I'm realizing like, is this just it? Like, is this just, is just life just completely about my body? Am I going to just, is that, is, is that all there is to me? And I really had to get to this place where I was like, there's got to be more to my life than being absolutely consumed with my body. Like how much of my headspace is filled with thoughts about my body. And what I realized was the thoughts that were popping into my mind and heart all the time about my body were not kind ones. So here I was, I did the thing that the whole world told me to do, which was to lose the weight. And I thought for sure, once I lost the weight, I would feel good and feel confident. Everything would be okay. And I had imagined this glorious life at a smaller size. And I remember sitting at my desk one day in our tiny little two bedroom apartment and realizing, whoa, I am very critical of my body. Sitting there half my size, very critical of my body. This episode of the Cheer Mom podcast is brought to you by Prodigy Cheer Apparel. You guys, I have to tell you about the shirts that I got from Prodigy Cheer Apparel's new swag store. I know that us moms, we like to feel cool and comfortable and stylish, and these Cheer Mom designs do not disappoint. I especially love the look of their neon mom shirt, and the fit is spot on. So check out all the designs at prodigycheerapparel.com and just search for the swag store. So that was a turning point to me where I'm like, I, I need to do some work, but 
different than it's been my entire life. This isn't physical work on my physical body. I'm going to have to do some inward work because I've got to now rewrite this narrative because I've got this real just going in my mind and heart constantly that my body is just not good enough. My body is just not good enough. No matter how much weight I would lose, I still felt like I needed to lose more. No matter Mm -hmm. how toned I would get, I still felt like it wasn't good enough. I would reach one goal and I would feel like there was another one that I needed to set right away. It was never, never, never good enough. And I just got to this place almost like fatigue of working on my body. And I'm like, how much longer? So I was like, okay, I got to stop thinking that I need to make my body good enough. And I got to flip that around a little and start to see this body as already good and see the good in it and celebrate it and just be more at peace with it. So that was, that was kind of my turning point and how I got to where I am in all of this at this point. Wow. Yeah. There's so much there. Just some of the stuff that you've taught me about you loving your body as is, as it is and accepting yeah. as is. And there's one thing that you said recently, I think it was in one of your emails, you said, as is doesn't mean a dead end. It doesn't yeah. mean, well, I'm just, this is who I am and this is how I'm going to be forever. Uh, there, You can still improve while loving yourself each step of the way. Right. And I can definitely relate to, and I think we, we all can, again, to if I could just, if I could just drop the baby weight, if I could just get to this size, if I could just fill in the blank. And unfortunately, and I want to switch gears here a little, I think that that is a huge theme in the cheer industry with our daughters. I am grateful that my daughter has grown up in a, in a program and an envi- environment where all body types are celebrated. But I think it's our human nature to look to the left and look to the right and go, okay, well, there's the four foot 10, 90 pound flyer. And there's, there's the other tall, skinny girl who came from a dance background and you you look down and you you question your own body and yeah. and I think it's interesting that you said kind of everybody I, I think it's probably safe to assume that everybody has had a moment like that no matter what their body type is because totally. even yeah. after you after you dropped all that weight you're like well it's it's not good enough I got to mm-hmm. do more I got to I got to tone more I got to do this I got to do that so I think that is is really interesting that we're probably all facing our own body struggles no matter yeah. how much we weigh or what size we are but in terms of the cheer industry there, I feel like uh, based on observations and based on talking to a lot of cheer moms, that that there is some insecurity when they get their, their two-piece uniforms maybe, or when they're being lifted in the air and maybe someone makes a comment or again, when they're, when they're looking at that tiny girl being thrown in the air, wishing that they had that body type. I I can see that if I were in that world as a young girl, that that would be very difficult in a time of of insecurity. So what would you say to girls, but to their moms, how do we empower them? How do we help them build that confidence even through those moments? That's such a good question. And if you think about an athlete, an athlete is doing a lot in their body. They are exploring what their body can do, how strong they can get, how much endurance they can build up. Any athletic thing, it involves the body. And that's a good thing because our bodies are good. But they may be focusing a lot on their bodies just by nature of what they do as an athlete, their balance, their um, their core strength so that they can do certain moves. There's just a lot that they're focusing on specifically about their body. And so if that trickles over to some of the body image issues, that's totally normal, especially having this understanding as a mom that we are all even, not just our daughters and our sons, we are all receiving a lot of messaging in social media and just in the world about our bodies, which we already know Mm -hmm. this, but, um, 
some something that you did ask is how we can approach this as their parents. And I think that one of the biggest things that we can do is to, well, there are a few things. So let's just talk about a few of them. <laughs> so num- one thing that we can do is to take away the stigma as far as talking about the issue. So if you're noticing that your daughter is is having trouble with, she's comparing her, her body or she's feeling like she needs to you know, restrict foods and and do things that aren't necessarily going to fuel her body well so that she can be her her best athletic self. Taking away the stigma from it, making it not a taboo talk topic, talking about how um what messages she might be receiving, but also just how she may be feeling. So opening up the lines of communication to where when she just has a feeling that may not even be a true fact, but that she's thinking, oh, I just I saw so and so and she mm-hmm. just flew in the air like that. And I just I will never be able to do that because of this or whatever the feeling that arises in her creating a space with her that she feels like she can open up and say that to you and that you will then not necessarily smash it right away, even if it's a thought that's not a productive thought, but she feels like she can open up and talk about it. Why is that important? Because if we're able to talk about it, then we can process through it. So it would be much Mm, better if she can come to you and say, ugh, so-and-so, such-and-such, I wish I could do like that, or like, I just can't do this because of whatever. She knows whatever her issue is that's coming through her mind. And, and if she feels like I can bring that to my mom and we can, and I can just like say how it feels, even if it's not like, <laughs> even if it's not complete reality, maybe it's just a, a feeling. It could even be a really big feeling, but not not allowing our, as the mother, our past experiences to cause us to react with a super strong emotion that then diminishes how she's feeling about that, if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. So we've got this open relationship where we can talk about these things. And then here's another thing. When she brings it to us, something that she's feeling about her body or something that happened um, that made her feel a certain way or whatever, we're validating that. So we're like, okay, well, we don't want to respond with a huge emotion. Well, then how do we respond? We validate exactly how she's feeling. Oh, okay. I can see feeling that way because fill in the blank. Or Mm -hmm. I understand that because I have felt that way before. And let me tell you the story. So validating without any um, necessarily any insight or anything right away, just validating what she has to say and that feeling. So all of that works together to sort of take away that stigma so that it's like the feeling comes, it's like a wave, it feels overwhelming, but then we allow it to kind of settle. Mm-hmm. And now we know we can talk it, talk through it in a safe space. Um, and then we can get to some more productive thinking after that. So that's just one, <laughs> one thing we can do. What's well, another one? Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> another thing that I, I talk a lot about, I get asked a lot, what can we do if we, if someone comes to us, if someone that we love is struggling with body image. And one Mm. of the biggest things that I say in that is to remove, so to untie the value of the person from the size of their body or whatever that thing is that they're, that they're talking about. Yeah. So that's hard to do for myself. That's why I, it is. And I want (laughs) to, and I want to talk about what you just said in a second. So bring that back up. (laughs) So yeah, it's hard to do ourselves. So untying, so we're not, it's not that you can't compliment anyone, your, your athlete, your daughter, your spouse, your, your person, whoever you want to compliment. It's not that we shouldn't compliment, but drawing more attention to the person than the body Mm. that the person is living in. Okay. Mm. So yes, the, the muscles are awesome. And this, this and that we're noticing this and that, and, and all of that is great. But more than that, I love how you show up every time with such tenacity. I love how you show up to every practice, just like ready to roll. Or I love that you are such, you're so assertive in school or I, you are such an honest person, like the actual person, because that's what makes the person valuable, not what their body is like, right? None of us are valuable because of what our bodies look like or what our bodies can or cannot do. That's, that doesn't make us 
worthy and valuable. No, we want to affirm the actual person in all of that. Like you are such a loyal friend. I notice you're really loyal to your friends or noticing all of those things as the person, even more so than any of the specifically the body thing. So it's untying the value of the person from the the aesthetics or the build or the mm. composition of their body. And that doesn't mean ignoring everything about the body. It just means the body is good. The body is great, amazing, intelligent, um, strong. You're great. You have a great body. Mm-hmm. You live in a, an awesome body. It doesn't mean we're ignoring the body and we're just, it doesn't mean anything like that. It's just untying the value mm-hmm. because we're so used to tying together what we can achieve with our body to what we are worthy of. But we want to mm-hmm. affirm that, no, you're worthy right now, no matter what, you know, what you do as an athlete is amazing and it's important and it's really, really great. And I'm going to draw attention to that as well, but I'm going to untie the value, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I was even thinking while you were talking in in cheer terms that, okay, let's say you get the new uniform, you're on a senior team and it's a crop top and uh, no, you know, not all uniforms, in my opinion, fit all body types. And so maybe your body type is, uh, doesn't agree, uh, or th- with your, with the uniform as, as much, um, as maybe a different body type would. And so I'm thinking as you're saying that all of those wonderful characteristics like loyalty and I love how you're a good listener and I love how you have a sense of humor, but even in cheer terms, like look at how flexible you are and look at what a great dancer you are. And I love your, your facial expressions and your showmanship and what a great team leader you are. Mm. The, there are things that you can, you, you can relate that to cheer and that you contribute in a routine that have nothing to do with even your physical ability. Uh, cheer takes physical ability, of course, but noticing those things apart from that physical aspect. And, yes. and uh, so I, I love that. Uh, let's go back to... Yeah, that's, I feel like I could do that for my daughter and I feel like I could do that for my friends, but I'm a big believer in you got to love yourself before you can truly fully love someone else well, which is a whole other deep topic that I'm probably very underqualified to speak about. But (laughs) how do I, because I notice when I walk past a window at at a department store, you know, when I'm walking outside and, and a window comes up and I kind of look sideways, I'm like, oh, or at the end of a long day, I'll flip the, uh, the visor up in the car and look in the mirror and kind of make noises or make comments about myself. And I noticed a long time ago when my daughter was younger that she noticed that. And she picked up on it and would kind of do the same things. And it got such to a point where I I just stopped dead in my tracks because someone said to me, would you talk to your daughter the way that you're talking to yourself? Mm, And that really hit me hard that, no, I talk to myself horribly. And and that that self-love we really need to be thinking about. But how do we – how do I even start? Because – we're so busy. We're, we're stressed. We're tired. It's cheer season. It's competition season. And I can't even begin to, to think about myself when I have all of these other things to take care of. So how do I even start having a positive attitude toward myself? I absolutely love this question because I, myself as a mom, have wondered, how am I going to overcome my own big, big body issues that I have wrestled with for years, decades in different ways. How am I going to overcome this? Because I desperately did not want my daughter to experience what I have experienced. So I think I was hyper-focused on all of that for a while and my intentions were really good, but I was still working on things within myself and still am to this day. People ask me all the time about this and I'm like, um, 
I'm hoping and praying that I'm doing it right. I don't know. <laughs> but one thing that I have, <laughs> what I, what I have realized, um, because there are things that I've said that I can't unsay in front of my kids, you know, about my body mm -hmm. or about mm -hmm. this being a good food or a bad food or just different things like that. And I am realizing as a mom that the best thing I can do to help my kids in their body journey, whatever that looks like, is to do the work on me. Because more, they're going to catch more. More is caught than taught, someone said <laughs> at one Ooh. time. More is caught than taught. Yes. Um, yeah. I apologize. I don't know who, or it's not something that I originated, but somebody said that one time and it just has always stuck with me. More mm. is caught than taught because I can tell my daughter till I'm blue in the face, you have a great body. You live in a good body and oh, look right. how strong you are and all these things. And then if I walk over to the mirror and I am just like, have a, a negative experience with that mirror that she, and she sees it and I didn't know she was standing there or I, maybe I did know and I just mm -hmm. wasn't thinking about it or whatever she's going to pick up on that and she's going to, she's going to adopt those things. And so I want to, first of all, give anybody grace <laughs> if you're like right now going through in your brain, yes. like, Oh no, I did yeah. this. And did that, and that. No, no, no. Give yourself grace because we have all done and said things in probably every realm of parenting that we wish we wouldn't have done and said, so give yourself grace, but going through that journey yourself, if you know that you're going through that journey yourself, then you can know that that is going to have a, a an effect on your kiddo. So you're working through some of this stuff for your sake, but you're also working through some of this stuff, these body issues for the sake of your daughter, your kids, whoever. Um, and so the starting place, I think one of the biggest, I've had a lot of starting places <laughs> in my journey, depending on which season of life I was in, but in learning to be at peace with my body and have a better relationship with me and with food and exercise and all of those things was just noticing. I just, I just began noticing what the narrative was that I was playing in my mind and heart because mm -hmm. I did so much physical work on my body for so long. I completely ignored what was going on in my mind and heart that, that, that narrative just completely, I, yeah. So I had to first notice what, what thoughts were popping up, what things would sort of trigger me or make me anxious or whatever. And then from there realizing that when something popped into my mind, that was a negative thought about myself, I could either, I couldn't control that for, I couldn't stop that from popping into my mind, but I can control where I let that thought go. I call it a thought path. So mm -hmm. something negative about your body pops into your mind and you can either go down the same path you always have and, and just kind of let it be a spiral and you're just going down this path, this negative body thought path. Um, you know, I'm not good enough. My legs are too big. I, this, whatever, you know what it is for you. Mm -hmm. um, or you can say, okay, 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 okay. I am going to make this, I'm going to take this down a different path and I'm going to see my body as good and, and, and try to appreciate it. And so that is sort of the beginning stages of as far as body image and, and seeing your body in a more positive light. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, there is a lot that happens when we actually evaluate how we are um, tying our mentality around food and exercise to body image. So if you're like stuck mm. in this dieting, restricting mentality yourself, it actually works against you the way that you see your body. So just kind of noticing those things. Notice if you are constantly thinking about what you shouldn't eat. Shouldn't, I should do an air quote, <laughs> what you shouldn't eat, what exercise you should be doing, all those kinds of things. If you're constantly focused on those things because you feel like your body is just never good enough and you need to lose more weight, lose more weight, lose more weight, and you're just in this this, this um, hamster wheel of, of dieting and fad diets and all these things, then that's actually going to work against your body image. So just, again, noticing. What is it for you? What's that first little step that you can take to have a better relationship with yourself? a better relationship with food and exercise and all those things. If you're in a season 
where you are really busy and it's cheer season and the days are long and there's a lot of things to remember and there's no way you can, you just feel like you have to put yourself on the back burner, then just evaluate where you are in that season. Like that's okay to see where you are and to see that different seasons require different things of you. And, and, you know, finding your rhythms in a certain season might look different than in another season. So again, I just think that first, first step is just noticing where, where am I having trouble right now? Like where, what is like the root of, of whatever it is with my body struggle? What is the root of all that? And noticing without judgment, like it's okay. It's okay where you are and just kind of going from there. Love it. So you have this book and I'm going to hold it up for people watching on video (laughs) called your good body embracing a positive, a body positive mindset in a perfection focused world. What an awesome, beautiful title. Tell us about the book and maybe some of your, your best tips that you've written about in it. Okay. So the book is like a deep dive into all the crevices of my entire life. (laughs) I basically pour my whole journey, like all the way from the beginning until all the way till now, um, into the book. So you get to read a lot about all the highs and lows and all the roller coaster moments of my body journey. And I don't just mean like body image. I go into all the past dieting stuff and all that stuff. And then we move into how we can move, fuel, and love our bodies well. So we're going to take away all that stuff we just talked about with dieting and we're going to look at um, health and wellness as actual health and wellness. And so we're going to look at how we can nourish our bodies with foods that make us feel well. We're going to look at how we can move in ways that we actually enjoy so that we don't hate our, whatever we're doing for exercise. Um, and then we're going to work on our relationship with the girl in the mirror. So all of that is Mm. sort of in the book. It's like a journey from page one to the very, very end. It's, it's fun. It's great. So if I do say so myself, (laughs) well, I can't wait to read it. I want you guys to find it, pick it up. Is it where, where can we find it? It is available anywhere that you like to order books. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble, there's an audio book on Amazon, um, anywhere, Target, anywhere. You can go order it from anywhere. So exciting. And where can we find you, Jennifer, if we want to connect with you? Okay. You can come over to Your Good Body Podcast. That's my podcast that I just launched. And we have um, Instagram. So at Jennifer Taylor Wagner, those are my two main spots. So Awesome. Check out all of Jennifer's channels. Instagram is is my favorite and when you have a beautiful family and I've loved following your story and your journey and being your friend and thank you for taking the time to talk to us and encouraging us so that we can encourage our daughters and I just am just so happy you're here. Thanks thank everybody. You.